Hello, everyone. We are happy to be with you here today to represent SuccessFinder and guide you in your understanding of your profile and report and support you in taking action. Hello, I'm Rasha Bosali, Senior Manager with the Client Solutions and Success Team at SuccessFinder. I'm an EMBA graduate, SHRM STP as well as PMP certified. Strategic alignment defines how I operate, and I'm very excited to be providing you today with a better understanding of your Career Explorer Pro report in line with unlocking possibilities to amplify self-awareness. And I'm Amanda Placing, the Director of Marketing and Communications here at SuccessFinder. I have had a very diversified career path with many years in marketing, but also a long company-wide rotation in every department from customer support to purchasing to product management. And after a few years of entrepreneurship, I sold my company to lead the marketing department here at SuccessFinder. So one of the reasons why I love SuccessFinder is that we are all very passionate about people potential. So putting people in the right roles to really make a difference for the individuals as well as for businesses. So if you, just a little side note, if you um, want to hear more about people potential, we have a podcast called People Potential with Amanda. So be sure to subscribe and follow along. We're on all the uh, podcast channels, Spotify, Apple Music, etc. So uh, follow us on LinkedIn. We post everything there as well. Um, and today we're going to dive into self-awareness, self-knowledge, self-knowledge and self-development and go through your Career Explorer report. Thank you, Amanda. So yes, today we are here to help you achieve your full potential through the power of behavioral data. And I would like to start with a quote by Albert Einstein. I'm going to read, everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing it's stupid. So remember, there are no good or bad profiles, just different unique starting points for each individual. We all have strengths. It's about comparing ourselves in contrast with ourselves. As you all must know, any successful journey starts with self-awareness and evolves with continuous professional and personal development. So today, through this brief webinar, we will aim to, one, help you understand the basics of Success Finder, two, help you decode your Career Explore Pro report, and three, unlock your learnings and invite you to take action. It's important for us at Success Finder to work with leaders of our community, and that is exactly why we have prepared this informative webinar today. So let's zoom out just a bit and remind you of what Success Finder measures and the philosophy that accompanies your behavioral insights. So let's rewind to the assessment. When and if you completed your Success Finder assessment, you might remember that you answered 344 choice questions that will decode a candidate's behavioral preferences. Basically, an individual's natural propensity or preference, not ability, to act or express themselves in a certain way. So in this slide, um, we're gonna try to help you better understand what it is that we measure. So let's look at this equation that beautifully capture what makes up our observed behaviors. Success finder measures the behavioral style which remains most stable over time. This is a person's attitudes, values, personality. Attitudes are settled in a way of thinking or feeling about someone or something that are reflected in a person's behavior. Values are a person's principles or standards of behaviors, one's judgment of what is important in life. And personality is the combination of characteristics or qualities that for the individual's distinctive character. This is your DNA, the yellow box. So the second box represents what can be found in a CV and developed through training, education, effort, and experience, something you might have control over. And finally, the third box would add all the other elements that make up a specific context, the type of organization you're in, your team, supervisor dynamics, and other contextual information. So the summation of these three is what ultimately drives performance. These are the observed behaviors, basically the way in which a person acts or conducts themselves. Again, 
something you might be able to influence in one way or another. And remember, by adding the success finder data to this equation, you are reducing cognitive biases. As humans, cognitive biases unintentionally influence our perceptions. Finally, through reliable information and strong predictions, uncertainty is reduced and decision-making augmented for organizations and individuals. In this slide, I want to make sure we review the key concept of behavioral preferences versus efforts. So the degree of alignment between your natural behavioral preferences and required behavior dictates efforts. Maybe Amanda could give us an example to put this in context. For sure, I would be happy to. So for me, honestly, visibility is not natural, meaning that I actually prefer not to put myself forward, not to be in the spotlight. However, I'm also a professional ballroom dancer um, and have been for 20 or so years or have been dancing for so many years. So it really shows that experience is also very important. So even if it's not natural for me to uh, just go out in the front and, and uh, perform in, every, in front of everyone because I've put so much effort into it over the years, it has become almost natural. And those 10,000 hours of experience allow me to uh, still be at my very best on stage and performing. Or for example, uh, in a presentation like this um, in front of uh, a virtual or a real audience. Indeed, that's an excellent example, Amanda, thank you. That's really the takeaway we want to leave you with. So high scores are high natural preferences. They are your favorite behaviors. So you choose them most often or always in the questionnaire when prompted. No matter the alternative, these are really your go-to behaviors. Whereas low scores are your low natural preferences. These are not behaviors that you cannot do, but you choose them least often or never. You always choose the alternative option in the questionnaire and you will need to invest energy and effort to display them consistently because they are your least favorites, your least favorite strategy or go-to strategy. So I'm gonna to move to the next slide and I wanna dive into another important component of the Success Finder Insights. These are the career themes. So remember, the assessment you completed not only uncovered your behavioral preferences that make up your unique behavioral DNA, we were also able to better uncover your career interests. So the same data can also predict your potential match with a range of career interests, looking at your behavioral fit for a role as well as your satisfaction for such a role. So if you are ready to deal with the least preferred aspects or the harsh realities of a role, you will most often have a higher probability to perform in such a role. And this is the foundation of our unique methodology that predicts behavioral fit and career satisfaction across different organizational levels, roles, industries, divisions, you name it. So taken together, your behavioral preference and career interests we can predict your likelihood of success and satisfaction across different career roles and industries. So how does this sound? Well, remember, there are no good or bad profiles, just different unique starting points for each individual. Absolutely. So now that we have uh, done an overview of Success Finder and how we measured your behavioral preferences, let's move on to the Career Explore Pro report. So after completing the assessment, you'll have access to the online report on our platform. So it's really important to note that yes, you can print uh, the PDF summary, but the richness of the um, clickable online journey is really so much greater. You can really go and click and explore all the elements of the report in so much more detail. So I really invite you to go check it out on the platform and live that, live and explore that online journey. So for today's uh, webinar, I will be an open book. So we're actually gonna use my own report as an example. So what you're about to see are my results. And it's another important note is, it's gonna look different than yours because each person is a unique individual. And the way our report shows up is that the top skills are shown in order of preference. 
uh, top behavioral preferences are also in order of preference, not to be repetitive, but it'll look completely different. So normal if your report has a different look than mine, and uh, also if it doesn't look like your colleagues. So let's jump right into it. So in the report, you'll actually see five sections in the Career Explore Pro, and we're going to start with these four first ones. So these four thumbnails summarize your highest scores for lifestyle priorities. We'll start with on the top left, and then um, your vocational incentives on the top right. Uh, Rasha, what does this mean? So the lifestyle priorities tab is indeed a very interesting. It basically measures your preferred activities type beyond your professional context. So for example, if you have a few extra hours a week to spare, how would you spend them? These are your lifestyle priorities. I guess the learning for me. Learning for you. <laughs> <laughs> so the professional incentives tab identifies your professional musts for you to feel happy in a professional setup. And in the next slide, you will see also the ladder of leadership. For the other tabs, we'll cover them shortly after that. So we'll move to the ladder of leadership. And just to explain to you what this framework uh, or this model is all about. So it's a behavioral competency model for driving the highest performance in three key corporate levels of the leadership, management, executive, and C-level. It essentially offers a data-driven framework to better understand high performers at each level of the leadership as well as how to target their development in order to maximize their potential impact. And, you know, there are some interesting findings that we're not all the same, like not all the same competencies are needed at each level, but two basic ones were needed for all the three. And these are thrives in chaos and leads decisively. But to read more all about this framework, we really encourage you to download the Ladder of Leadership white paper available on our website. And but let's take a look at Amanda's complete profile results next. So this part of the report provides you with a complete competency profile. It's a snapshot of an individual score on each of the 26 success final competencies. These competencies are grouped by category and scores are presented in descending order by category, like Amanda was explaining. So the bottom of the page presents the preference scale to refer to when interpreting the scores. Uh, there are five distinct preference levels, but there are only three colors really to help you, you know, to facilitate the interpretation at a glance. So the light blue is for lower preference, medium blue for medium preference, and the dark blue for high preference. So remember, the report is dynamic. You want to click and explore to really discover not only your strength, but dive into areas of development. And always remember, we want to focus on celebrating your strength and keep working on, you know, betting on them as well as look at those areas for development. So it needs to be a balance and we must stay positive. You don't want to spend time on trying to do the things we don't enjoy. You want to recognize and be careful about it and keep your focus on what you're strong at, because this is where, you know, this is what got you where you're at today. And this is what's going to take you to where you're going to be at tomorrow. So by promoting self-awareness, we want to promote and celebrate your strengths that have gotten you where you're at today, like we said. So this is really an overall view, but you want to zoom in on each competency and read a bit more about it. Yes, and going remember, back to that, click and explore the on interactive yeah. online journey. There's really like so much information that you'll uncover by clicking on each one of these. And you know, always remember this very important concept. A lower preference doesn't mean you cannot demonstrate this competency, but this would require you to put in more effort to actually demonstrate it. And this is really if you choose to, right? It's something you can control and it's something that you're well self-aware of and cognizant of. So, you know, the sky is the limit when, when you know how to, how to manage all of that. Absolutely. Now for the job family section, you have to look at this section with a lot of humility and a curious mind. So sometimes you'll see unexpected matches. And don't forget that benchmarks are built on highest performers. So a lower or average match just means that you are further away from the absolutely best, not that you cannot do that job or, you know, or a job within that job family. 
So it's really normal not to have any or few high matches. It's most common, honestly. The objective of this section is to open our minds to other possibilities to look at and explore. So certain types of jobs have high performers that look like you. So it means some of your competencies are similar to theirs. Now, just to reflect together on the typical reactions one can have when reading his or her results. Either, no surprises, you know, you might feel that these results pretty much confirm what you already knew, or the result might match things, you know, you did not expect. Or you might be extremely surprised at the result. You know, they did not match what you thought you were actually good at. So remember, we do not measure your ability, but rather your similarity, personality-wise, with people who do these jobs and actually perform extremely well in them. So you might actually find that you bring a different approach to a role that is less typical. What about you, Amanda? You know, what did you feel when you read your report? So let's dive into this uh, section with the um, job families, the match level on job families. And I was really surprised to see that I don't have any high or very high matches with any of these roles that are listed here. I'm at the above average and there's not even my current role on this um, specific sheet. So I guess I didn't really match with it. Right. So so what does that really mean? <laughs> That is often the case. So let's put this in the context of your own role, since you gave us you know, your example. And let's think of the specifics of your company size, really the real type of your role within this industry, right? Because the marketing director across industries or across company sizes can be very different. So for example, being a marketing director at SuccessFinder, a fast growing HR tech company in a cutting edge field, and in a growing and very competitive market is certainly different from being a marketing director in a large consumer goods company in a stable or declining market. So the results need to be contextualized. Okay, I get it much more when, when explained that way. So for example, uh, the fact that I wear different strategic operational, operational management, all kinds of different hats, and we have a smaller team, uh, must not really correspond to a similar role in a large company. And uh, I know that, for example, my experience in entrepreneurship, uh, in addition to experience that I had in marketing, really helped me be selected for the role. Definitely, because, you know, entrepreneurial mindset is very important at SuccessFinder. But again, to clarify a few things about how we look at role fit, let's look at it from another angle, from a more visual angle. So we study people who are said to be very successful and satisfied with their work. And the study reveals the role's unique recipe for success. So in career exploration, we show you your match level on 80 job families that we have studies in, studied in this way. So your match level is basically the similarities between your profile and the recipe for success profile. So imagine a lunar eclipse visual. The more similar you are to this profile, the higher the overlap, the higher the match. And the more likely you are to be, you know, so the, so the more likely you are to be successful and satisfied if you do this type of work. Mm -hmm. So the bottom line, just because you're naturally good at something, it doesn't mean you're passionate about it or interested in doing it as a career. Or just because you're interested or passionate about something doesn't mean it will come naturally to you or it will be easy to do it well based on your style. So when SuccessFinder shows you your match level, we are showing you things where you have both the preference and the interest for this type of work. So success and satisfaction are maximized when your natural preferences match the kind of work to be done and your career interest also matches it. So let's jump to the match level for the ladder of leadership. And this is specific to the Career Explore Pro report. Um, so here are my results. And to be honest, I wasn't, uh, uh, it was like mixed emotions when I read it. So I was happy with uh, the first level uh, with the higher match. But what does it mean for my future career progression if I'm only an average match for the next two levels? Or what if I had even been like a lower match, um, but that I want to progress up the ladder? 
And maybe that's not for everyone. Uh, someone might not want to, and that is perfectly uh, fine. But let's say in this case, I do. Um, what are the next steps and how should I interpret these results? Because, you know, someone might be feeling a little down when you first read this or frustrated given your years of experience and, and uh, track record in management. So uh, what should I do? You are not doomed in any way. <laughs> <laughs> no, I meant what should I do? Not, not, not doom and gloom. I'm not that worried, but... <laughs> but how should I interpret this and and yeah. take it um, with positivity or like what are what definitely. are my next steps? <laughs> definitely. So the quick answer is that this does absolutely not mean that you cannot do it and it wouldn't be you know and you wouldn't be great at doing it. Okay, this is just a guide for behaviors, right? So you'll simply have to put more energy towards developing certain competencies that you can count on at each level and really put effort in sustaining and supporting these. So similarly to seeking support within your environment, and we'll discuss that shortly after. So for example, here in your case, overcoming adversity and reasoning critically are competencies. You should be putting more conscientious effort in developing and also seeking support of your environment in doing that. Because remember, your skills and experience will also be a huge factor here that will go alongside your natural behavioral preferences to help you get to that next level and get there you know in the most high performing high performing way if you want great and then i, I guess i'll rely on my uh the ones that are stronger like things conceptually and focuses on results to like keep me going in that direction definitely so now we move on to what I think is the most important step. So we went over how SuccessFinder works, how to interpret your results, but let's not forget that we need to put this all into action. And like I was asking uh, Rasha, like what are those next steps? So first of all, before we move on with some a uh, few more tips, uh, it's just really important to remember that for professional development, you wanna be sure that you're basing your action plan on reliable predictive data and insights. So these types of behavioral insights can make a huge difference in your action plan. So then on top of these insights, there are other systems that uh, can support you in your development. Definitely, you know, here are some resources you can use for your development and you don't wanna be shy to ask for continuous feedback in combination with what you've gained in terms of self-awareness and all the other points of views and angles will help you. So for example, to list a few, you know, you can seek a career, the, the support of a career coach, um, ask your peers uh, who inspire you, you know, um, who, who, are the, who are your cheerleaders? Who are the, the individuals that actually encourage you? You know, listen to them, seek feedback from them. Uh, in organization or even on a personal level, you can have a mentor, somebody like at a more senior level uh, that is influential, that can really help you think through uh, the, this development plan. Um, you know, there are connectors also uh, that broaden your network and broaden your reach within your industries or a wellness coach. It might be about finding the right kind of balance also at a certain point. So there's a lot of you know, there's unlimited really resources to help you complement what you've unlocked today in terms of data-driven insights. And we really encourage you um, to, seek, uh, to seek these resources, really the help of these resources. Um, finally, we wanna leave you with a few key takeaways really from our conversation today. So first of all, self-awareness is a powerful tool for professional development. Um, you wanna, know and work on your areas of development okay but remember to always focus on your strengths because this is exactly what got you where you're at today and not everything is important it all depends on what you want to get out of it and what applies to your current context so finally professional development is an iterative and ongoing process where you should be regularly revisiting your success finder results so keep them handy revisit them regularly and as you're going through this journey of self and professional development, know that you can always rely on you know, the, the behavioral insights and the data uh, that is generated in the report. 
Yeah, I know that I definitely go through my results um, at least once a quarter to make sure they're still top of mind. What are my strengths? What are my areas of development? And how do I continue to improve and make sure that, that I am focusing and celebrating my strengths so that I can contribute uh, the most possible and, and I'm using those strengths um, to the best of my abilities and not putting too much time um, in areas that take a lot more effort. So how can I be the most efficient and um, maximize my contribution? So another, like just a quick note is success finder data can really help organizations. And this is how we work with most of our clients um, for HR teams. We encourage you to get in touch with our team if you wanna find out more about how we do predictive hiring, talent management, talent analytics. So this range of solutions all support uh, strategic HR practices, ranging from, like I said, predictive hiring to talent management and talent analytics. So reach out to our team at team at successfinder.com to book a solutions tour and find out just how we work with HR teams at large enterprises and actually enterprises of all sizes uh, these days to find great HR strategic solutions. And finally, if you want to learn more, even more about yourself and dive deeper into your success finder results, we'll be happy to put you in touch with one of our expert partners who can give you a full debrief. And um, again, reach out to us at our email and we'll be happy to put you in touch. And that is it for us today. Thank you so much for your attention. We are so happy to be here with you and uh, reach out for any questions. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on LinkedIn and um, thank you. Thank you.